You know, I think that, um, it, you know, a couple of things. I think as my job, I'm smiling because my husband is like waving at me. What's, what's, what's actually been the most challenging part of COVID is trying to work from home with my husband being like, oh, that's really funny in the background when he knows I'm having this interview with you. The first thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that you're opening a brand new store in Abbott Kinney in Los Angeles, right in the middle of this pandemic. Tell us a little bit about this store and what makes it different from the other stores that you have. Um, what's a little bit different about this concept, which we're calling live at Abbott Kinney, is it's not just our physical location on Abbott Kinney, which allows us to represent the brand extremely well and bring people into the world of Beauty Counter. It is also a place where we are going to be live streaming content out of the uh, four walls in California so that we can interact directly with our clients around North America and around the world where they're going to be able to have an entertaining shopping experience from the comfort of their home but with us in Los Angeles. We've always at Beauty Counter wanted to be as disruptive in the way in which we distribute our products as we have been in the way in which we've created our clean, you know, high-performing products. So we believe that this is the, this is not only the future of retail, but I think this is the future of e-commerce, where you can be sitting anywhere you want to be and interacting with the brands that you love and having a direct dialogue with them and shopping at the same time. Hopefully, all the while, you know while being entertained. So we're really excited about this. This has been a really interesting year. Um, and I wonder whether it has spurred you as a founder, but then also, you know, leading a company to be more creative or to innovate in new ways. You know, I think that what behaviors are going to change, what are consumers' expectations going to be on the other side of this? And the one thing that we've seen is that people do want to have digital interactions. They want to have that true connection to people and to brands. And they also want to be able to do this through the comfort and safety of their homes, whether that's building a business or whether that's shopping for a product. We know that this pattern of behavior has changed. And I think that the future of retail and e-commerce will be about community, will be about intimacy, will be about to be dialogue. When we've talked about it, you've, you've mentioned that it's kind of an experiment, right? I, you, you felt like there was something there, but you weren't exactly sure how it was gonna play out. Talk to me just a, a little bit about that, about this this idea of, you know, trying to be experimental and, and, and trying new things during this time? Well, first of all, people are taking care of their skin. They're taking care of their health. They're equating clean beauty and health in ways that they weren't prior to this. They're really focusing on the integrity of ingredients. They want to be educated on this. They want to that they want to learn about products and they want to be able to purchase in a in a comfortable way. And so I think that we decided to test this because we were seeing increasingly our digital influencers on our platform were building intimate relationships with their clients and being able to reach well beyond their, you know, their their physical geography to reach many new people. We thought, why can't we do the same thing? We have a brick and mortar store, we have four walls in which, you know, inside of which we can build sort of a, a shrine to our brand to really fully immerse people in the brand that's beauty counter while simultaneously broadcasting, hopefully entertaining content out to our existing community and beyond that allows people to interact with us, to learn from us, to shop with us, and to feel that they are part of our community and our movement for change. You know, one of the things that we care so deeply about is our advocacy efforts, and you know this because you've been involved with us over the years in, in some of those efforts where we are not only about selling beauty counter products, but also advocating for a healthier, safer future for all, and that is part of our focus on legislative reform. And, and in doing this, we've also hoped that we reach so many more people that that may or may not be aware of our brand, but are become aware of our movement and will help participate in in their democracy to help us you know, move the needle in a really positive direction. But it is all a test and learn, and, and we'll see how it goes. We're, we're very excited about it, but I'm sure it'll have 50 iterations before it comes to its you know, final resting place and we know exactly what we're doing.